Reaction stoichiometry. So in section 4.1, we learned how to balance chemical equations. And um, we learned that a chemical equation is kind of like a recipe in that it provides the ingredients and what it is that you're going to make. So the ingredients are like the reactants and then the finished, uh, finished item is like the products of a chemical reaction. So um, stoichiometry is the relationship of the of the amounts of the ingredients the ratio the ratio of each reactant and each product so um, for example when we were balancing an equation we learned that an unbalanced reaction lists the ingredients so for example egg plus flour makes cake um, but when we balance the equation uh, we make sure that we add the coefficients out in front of the ingredients and the products so that we can say two eggs plus one cup of flour makes one cake. And we add the numbers of ingredients out in front of each ingredient and product. Um, and those are called coefficients. So stoichiometry is the relationship of the ingredients to each other and the ingredients to the products and the products to each other. Basically, it's the, um, the ratio of all of those coefficients in a balanced chemical equation. So the reason that it's important for us to uh, think about stoichiometry is because if I'm thinking about a recipe and I uh, have a recipe and it says two eggs plus one cup of flour make six pancakes, then it's easy for me to make 12 pancakes. You can do that in your head. Well, if it takes two eggs and one cup of flour for six, then it takes four eggs and two cups of flour for 12. You just have to double it if you're trying to make 12 pancakes. But what if you want to make 37 pancakes or 145 pancakes or some number of pancakes that's not a simple multiple of six so that you can't just double the ingredients? Well, if we understand the process of stoichiometry, then we can start with any number of pancakes, for example, and determine how many eggs and cups of flour we would need to make that exact number of pancakes. So when we're thinking about chemical reactions, and we're thinking about products that we might want to make in a chemical reaction, then um, it's important to know how many grams of each reactant or how many moles of each reactant I need to put into a chemical reaction in order to make a certain amount of product. I'm trying to make a kilogram of a certain medicine uh, in a chemical reaction. So if I'm gonna make a kilogram of um, aspirin in my chemical factory, then I need to know how much of and which kind of reactant that I need to put in so that I can make a kilogram of aspirin. So that's kind of the idea here when we're talking about stoichiometry. So for example, if I look at this equation and I have one cup of pancake mix and three quarters cup milk and one egg makes eight pancakes and I need to make two dozen pancakes, then the way that I might set this up would be two dozen and in one dozen I have 12 pancakes and for every 8 pancakes I need 3 quarter cup milk and we can see that here, eight pancakes is three quarters cup milk. So if we do this math, two times 12 times 0.75 divided by eight equals 2.25 cups of milk. Right, dozen cancels dozen, pancake cancels pancake, so my units are cups of milk.
So um, this, this stoichiometry is a good way for us to understand the relationship between the ingredients or the chemical reactants in a chemical reaction and the amount of product that we're going to get. And then for, for a given number of pancakes, for example, if I need 24 pancakes, then I can figure out how much milk I need and how many eggs I need and how much pancake mix I need. Um, and alternately, so we looked at this and we can say, well, I want to make 24 pancakes. How much milk do I need? But we could also answer other questions by using the stoichiometry approach. We could say, if I have nine eggs, how much milk do I need? So we could say nine eggs, and for every one egg, I need three quarter cup milk. Nine times three quarters equals six point seven five cups of milk. So using stoichiometry, we can find out how much product I'm going to make if I have a certain number of ingredients, how many pancakes I could make, or how much product I can make of a chemical compound. Or if I need to get a certain number of pancakes, how many ingredients do I need? Or if I only have a gallon of milk, how many pancakes could I possibly make? If I have a dozen eggs, how many pancakes does that give me if I have everything else that I need? So stoichiometry gives me the relationship of the quantities of the ingredients so that I can answer questions like that about chemical reactions. So it's important when we're um, trying to answer stoichiometry questions that we start with a balanced chemical equation. So um, if we're given a chemical equation that is not balanced, then we must balance it first before we can answer any questions about the amount of ingredients that we're going to need. So um, the, the coefficients that go in front of a balanced chemical equation, in front of the chemical compounds, those are um, the numbers that allow us to do these kinds of calculations in, um, in a stoichiometry analysis. So how many moles of I2 are required to react with 0.429 moles of aluminum according to the following equation? Two aluminum plus three iodine makes two aluminum iodide. So here's our recipe. Right, two eggs plus three cups of milk makes two biscuits or something. Right, so it's just a, it's just a recipe. A chemical equation is just a recipe, and I have my ingredients on this side, and I have my products on this side. So, um, just like in any uh, problem where we're we're trying to do some kind of unit conversion, um, we're always going to try to find the numbers that are important in the word problem. So in this one we have 0.429 moles and what we're being asked is how many moles of I2. So we don't really have, I, I guess the other piece of information would be the balanced chemical equation down here and that's essential when we're doing a stoichiometry problem. We have to have that balanced chemical equation to start with or we can't answer a question like this. So the number that we're given with that we start with is this 0.429 moles of aluminum. So if I have moles of aluminum on the top, I have to put moles of aluminum on the bottom. And if I put moles of aluminum on the bottom, and the question's asking how many moles of iodine do I need, then I should put moles of iodine, I2, on the top. So to fill this in now, we've got to put the numbers in. Our units look right. So the way that we've set this up now, moles of aluminum and moles of aluminum will cancel. Um, and I'll be left with moles of iodine. Uh, but now we've got to figure out what numbers go in here. So um, according to the balanced chemical equation, it says two aluminum 
and that means 2 moles of aluminum plus 3 I2. That's 3 moles of I2. So we look up here in the balanced chemical equation and I take those numbers, the coefficients that are in front of each chemical compound, and those become the numbers that go inside the parentheses um, in a stoichiometry problem. So then we put this into the calculator, 0 0.429 times 3 divided by 2. 0.6435 moles of I2. And if I look over here and I have three sig figs, then I can keep three sig figs on my number, so that gives me 0 0.644. Moles of I2. So that's saying, for example, it, it becomes very abstract when we're talking about these chemical, um, chemical equations and we're putting chemical compounds in here and talking about moles and talking about grams. It's, it's, not, it's very hard to understand the connection. So that's why I keep talking about pancakes and, and making uh, biscuits and cookies because it's the same exact thing when you're trying to make a recipe and the recipe is for 12 cookies and you want to make 23 cookies you have to do the same exact kind of math and this is how you would do it so that's why I keep talking about cookies is that the idea here is that this says um, this is a problem that says how many uh, if I have if I have 0.429 ounces of milk how many eggs do I need in order to make two biscuits, right? So that's, that's how to interpret a question like this. So this is my recipe. And I have to do this kind of math with the unit, using a unit conversion, using the numbers from my recipe in order to convert aluminum or one ingredient to another ingredient or one ingredient to a product. So we can see here the reason that um, let's let's try to make sense of these numbers. Now we're you know we're talking about eggs. It's easy to talk about whole numbers of eggs, and now we're talking about 0.429 moles and 0.644 moles. Well, let's think about those numbers. I start with 0.429 moles of aluminum, and then it says that's going to require 0.644 moles of iodine. Well, this number is bigger than that number. Is that right? Well, according to my recipe, I need more iodine than aluminum because my recipe says I need three iodine, three moles of iodine, and I only need two moles of aluminum. So my moles of iodine is bigger. I have 0.644 moles of iodine required, and I have 0.429 moles of aluminum required. So do those numbers make sense? Well, let's see where they come from. If we put 0.6 for four moles of iodine on top and 0 0.429 moles of aluminum on the bottom and we put that into the calculator 0.644 and I get 1.5 which equals 3 over 2. Right? So this this ratio right here, 3 over 2, that is the ratio from my recipe. 3 moles of iodine for 2 moles of aluminum. But I don't have 2 moles of aluminum. I only have 0.429 moles of aluminum. So if I only have 0.429 moles and I can't make this recipe because I don't have the 2 moles of aluminum that I need, well, I have iodine. How much iodine do I have to use to make less than the recipe would would make otherwise. So I still have this ratio right here 0.644 to 0.429 is the same ratio as 3 over 2. So that's what stoichiometry lets us do. It allows us to take any starting amount, anything that we start with, we can say well how much of the other ingredients or products do we need a court that's going to always give us this 3 over 2 ratio, if the 3 over 2 is what our, our equation tells us.
how many grams of H2 are required to produce 0.429 moles of NH3 according to the following equation. Okay, so we have 0.429 moles of NH3 and this is asking how many grams of H2. All right, so we'll start with the same thing. We're going to start in the same place we did last time. We start with this number that we're given, 0.429 moles of NH3. And then I have to put moles of NH3 on the bottom so that those will cancel. And this is asking for grams of H2. So I could put grams of H2 on the top like this, but I don't know how many moles of NH3 there are per gram of H2. This conversion, I don't have this information. If I had this information, how many grams of H2, if I had something that had units of grams of H2 per moles of NH3, then I could plug it in here. But I don't have that this the problem didn't give me that information. So although that's what I want, I can't get there directly. But if I have if I know how many moles of NH3, then uh, and I'm trying to get to grams of H2. Well, if I know how many grams of H2 there are in a mole of H2, because that's information that's given on the periodic table. The grams per of a compound per mole, I just use the atomic mass at the peri in the periodic table for each element and add up all of the elements in the compound to generate the molar mass. And then I can use that molar mass, one point, oh no, this is H2. So this would be two, 0 0.02 grams of H2 in one mole of H2. So how do I get from moles of NH3 to moles of H2? Well, that's the information that's in a chemical equation. How many moles of, of H2 are there? Three. How many moles of NH3 are there? Two. So this happens to be the same 3 over 2 ratio that we saw in the last equation. It doesn't have to be that ratio, but this equation is asking us something, and we're given a, a chemical equation that gives us the same ratio, 3 over 2. So let's make sure that our units cancel out, and we're, we have moles of NH3 on top, and moles of NH3 on bottom, moles of H2 on top, moles of H2 on bottom, and what I'm left with is grams of H2. So let's put, the, put this into the calculator. 0.429 times 3 divided by 2 times 2.02. 1.2999 grams. Uh, so I have four or th three sig figs here. I should keep the first three over here. So I look at this nine, which tells me to round up. So I get 1.30 grams of H2. So what we did in the first problem was we went from moles of compound A to moles of compound B. It said if I have 0.429 moles of aluminum, how many moles of iodine do I need? So we went from moles of A to moles of B. In, in this problem, the next one we did, this is, that was 4.8. In 4.9, we went from moles of NH3 to moles of H2 to grams of H2.
Let me try, change this, A and B. I was just putting in variables because I forgot what they were. Moles of aluminum to moles of I2. So you can see the pattern. When we're doing stoichiometry, we can go from moles of one substance to moles of another substance when we use a balanced chemical equation. And we can get from moles of a substance to grams of that same substance by using the molar mass of that substance. So moles of H2 to grams of H2, we need the molar mass of H2. Okay, what mass of sodium hydroxide would be required to produce 16 grams of the antacid milk of magnesia magnesium hydroxide by the following reaction? Okay, so remember when we're doing a word problem like this, don't get intimidated by how many words there are. So this question is asking for what mass of sodium hydroxide? And let's see, would be required to produce 16 grams. It's a lot of words to say 16 grams of this. 16 grams of the antacid, milk of magnesium, magnesium hydroxide, blah, blah, blah. It's just this. 16 grams of MgO2. Now let me include this up here. So this is asking what mass, mass is grams, of sodium hydroxide. would be required to produce 16 grams of magnesium hydroxide. So we're trying to get to grams of sodium hydroxide. And we're given grams of magnesium hydroxide. So let's work backwards a little bit. If I have, if I need grams of something, then what was, what did I have just before that? Well, we can answer this question because we we just solved that problem. Uh, we solved the problem where we were asked how many grams of hydrogen would we need in the last example. Well, right before grams of hydrogen, I had moles of hydrogen. Remember, and we used the uh, molar mass of hydrogen to get from moles to grams. So if this question is asking, what mass of sodium hydroxide do I need? It's asking, how many grams of sodium hydroxide? Well, what I had right before grams must have been moles, because it's always going to follow the same pattern. We saw in the first one, we went from moles of aluminum to moles of iodine. In the second one, we went from moles of N, uh, NH3 to uh, moles of H2, and then grams of H2. So here, we're going to go from moles of magnesium hydroxide to moles of NaOH to grams of NaOH. But in order to do that, because we're starting with grams of magnesium hydroxide, I have to start with grams first. So this map that I just drew here is the map that we're always going to follow with stoichiometry problems. So we can fill in the specifics by putting magnesium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide and whatever the actual compound is that's in the specific question that we're dealing with. But to take some of these figures out of there and make this an easier diagram to look at, in general, this is always the scheme that a stoichiometry problem follows. Grams of A to moles of A to moles of B to grams of B. And what that means is that if I'm given grams of a compound, like I was in this problem right now, if I'm given grams, and it's asking me to get to grams of something else, then this is the scheme I have to follow. Grams of A to moles of A to moles of B to grams of B. If I'm given, if I'm, the problem is asking uh, how many moles of B can I make if I have this many grams of A? 
then I have to follow this uh, this sequence, grams of A to moles of A to moles of B. If the question is asking how many moles of B can you make if you have this many moles of A, then I have to follow this sequence, moles of A to moles of B. So this is set in stone, this sequence right here, grams of A to moles of A to moles of B to grams of B is always the same for every stoichiometry problem, always. The only thing that changes is what A and B are. So whenever I'm doing a stoichiometry problem that asks me to convert from grams of one thing to grams of another, or moles of one thing to moles of another, I always have to follow this pattern right here. So let's apply this pattern to this one. This says I have 16 grams of magnesium hydroxide. So that's the number that I'm given where I start. And I always have to follow this scheme. So I go grams of magnesium hydroxide. I have that in the numerator, so I have to put that down here in the denominator so they'll cancel. And according to my scheme, I go from grams of A to moles of A. So grams of magnesium hydroxide to moles of magnesium hydroxide. So we calculate the molar mass of magnesium hydroxide by looking up the elements on the periodic table. One magnesium, two oxygens, and two hydrogens. Um, and we come up with 58.3 grams in one mole of magnesium hydroxide. So magnesium hydroxide, moles of magnesium hydroxide in top, on the top, moles of magnesium hydroxide on the bottom, so that those will cancel. So according to my scheme, I go from moles of one substance to moles of another. So this question is asking me to go how many um, grams of NaOH. So in order to, to get to grams of NaOH, I first have to get to moles of NaOH. So this is one, um, according to my uh, um, balanced chemical equation up here, the coefficient for magnesium hydroxide is one, and the coefficient for sodium hydroxide is 2. So my, uh, my mole ratio for the stoichiometric calculation looks like this, 2 moles of sodium hydroxide for every 1 mole of magnesium hydroxide. If I have moles of sodium hydroxide on top, I need to put moles of sodium hydroxide on the bottom so they'll cancel. And my, uh, my pattern says I'm going from moles of something to grams of that. So moles of sodium hydroxide to grams of sodium hydroxide. And this is grams per mole, so this is just the molar mass that I look up on the periodic table. So we calculate the molar mass of sodium and oxygen and hydrogen and add them together. All right, let's uh, make sure that our units cancel out. Grams of magnesium hydroxide, grams of magnesium hydroxide, moles of magnesium hydroxide for moles of magnesium hydroxide, moles of sodium hydroxide to moles of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so let's put this into the calculator. 16 divided by 58.3 times 2 times 40 equals 54.889 grams of sodium hydroxide. So let's account for sig figs. I have two sig figs over here, so I should keep two sig figs over here. Look at the 8, which tells me to round up. So I would get 55 grams of sodium hydroxide. These problems that we just looked at involved going from moles. In the first problem, we went from moles of a substance to moles of another substance. And the stoichiometric factor is what we get from a balanced chemical equation. In the next problem, we went from mass of a substance to moles of a substance to moles of another substance. In the last problem, we went from 
mass of A, grams of A to moles of A. Then we used the balanced chemical equation to convert from moles of A to moles of B. And then the molar mass of B to get from moles of B to grams of B. So this scheme here shows us all of the various um, different possibilities for these kinds of calculations. So for example, if I'm talking about two liquids and I want to know if I have milliliters of one substance and I want to know how many milliliters do I need of another substance in a reaction where A is a liquid plus B, which is a liquid, makes C, which is a liquid, well, then I maybe I'm going to start with milliliters of A. How many milliliters of A do I need for this many milliliters of B? So in that case, I would go from milliliters. The density is grams per mil. So then I could get grams. The molar mass is grams per mole. So then I can get moles. And these are, this is all of one substance, so mils of A, grams per mole of A, or grams per mil of A, grams of A, grams per mole of A, moles of A. And then we use the stoichiometric factor in a balanced chemical equation. So balanced equation and then we can get moles of B. Then we use the molar mass of B, which is grams of B per mole. And then we have grams of B. And then the density is grams per mil. Then I could get mils of B. That would be a really long problem, but this is how you would do it. You would convert the, you always have to get to moles. Notice that moles is here in the middle. So regardless of what we're given, if we're given milliliters, we have to convert milliliters into moles. So we would have to go here first. If I'm given grams, I have to convert grams to moles. If I'm given uh, um, volume of a solution, this is up here, this is volume of a pure substance, so I'd use the density. If I have the volume of a solution, then I can get moles of that substance. If I have the number of particles, then I can convert that to moles. So everything goes to moles. I'm always trying to convert to moles. And once I've converted to moles, then I can use the information in the balanced equation. That's why I have to have that recipe. And when I have moles of one substance, I use a balanced equation to convert to moles of another substance. And once I have moles of that other substance, then I can go anywhere else. I can go from moles to mils of a pure substance, moles to volume of a solution, moles to the number of particles that I have, moles to grams, but I, I kind of I need to go to between moles because the chemical equation that we're looking at is always written in terms of moles. Two moles of A for every three moles of B makes two moles of C. So since the chemical equation is written in terms of moles, then we need to always convert to moles of a substance first and then use that equation to convert to moles of another substance, and from there we can go to any of the other units.